uh, John Brooks, um, born in uh, New Hampshire, Manchester, and got interested in uh, visual art as a child. There was no question in my mind you know, that I wanted to continue with the arts and um, thought I would love to do wood sculpture because that was something that I picked up on my own and started doing. Continued right through high school with that, but I didn't have any education uh, with, uh, with woodworking. So I applied to Rhode Island School of Design and to RIT. I ended up with uh, working with uh, Wendell Castle and Bill Kaiser and a wonderful experience. And I did undergraduate work and uh, then I did a graduate degree program and then moved to the Bay Area in San Francisco and decided I would try to make a living making furniture and sculpture. Uh, I would describe my work at this point as a uh, collaboration with uh, nature. The, the work is a collaborative process where rather than sitting down and designing something, I wander about in the forest and look for things that I'm attracted to or I see possibilities in. And occasionally I go into the forest looking for a specific shape, but I think I do a lot better when I just find something that I'm attracted to and then see what the possible options are for me and the shape working together. I'm attracted to the forest and that's something that goes back to my childhood. And in the development of my visual voice, I decided to be collaborative in the process. I was attracted to the forest and to trees and so I just kind of evolved into working with tree forms. Uh, some of it came from working with Wendell where he was doing the stack laminate and I could see these solid forms that he was subtracting and I decided I would go work with solid pieces, you know, that were already in existence and do subtractive work from them. And then I my work evolved into uh, thinner, lighter pieces where I was doing more construction of taking uh, smaller saplings and joining them together. And, but I still do both, you know, the subtractive carving and the uh, constructive pieces. Uh, as a child, uh, I loved working with color. I loved to paint. When I was in art school, I did a lot of painting. Canvas painting, um, drawings with colors. Uh, and then I got away from it for a while, where it was just, just the wood, natural wood, you know, like some of the pieces you see in here. Then I had this uh, residency at the uh, University of Tasmania, just in part of Australia. And uh, I, had a, I was given a full year to, on a salary to this do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, I decided I would start uh, looking at Aboriginal work and other cultural um, works in color. And suddenly the color started to come back. I developed this uh, visual language, which was uh, the use of hieroglyphics in my work and with color pencil. So it was just a raw wood. And then I did color pencil marks on it. And then uh, I started painting whole pieces and more and more that way. So that's how I got into color and I still am. But I still do pieces that have no color on them whatsoever. I have a lot of technologies that I've developed myself as far as uh, joinery techniques that are uh, basically devised out of necessity to get things together so that they're strong. So, yeah, and I use a lot of uh, 
Delrin, because most of my joinery is in the round, you know, because the wood is in the round, so the, uh, the pieces that I use for joinery are, are round. All the tenon, all the jo joinery is round, round things, as opposed to rectilinear. Particularly maple, it's very abundant here. It's very strong, it's very durable, so I can get fairly small pieces of it that follow the shape of the tree and are extremely strong, as opposed to taking lumber and then laminating it into that shape or steaming it or bending it. So I just like to use the shapes as they are. But again, I refine them so the essence of that form is uh, made easier visually to read. Instead of being all lumpy and bumpy and other, I just I, uh, refine it quite a bit. I spend a lot of time doing that. Well, again, I'm attracted to the shape of it first, and then I uh, go from there. So uh, I combine lumber with uh, some pieces, uh, but the actual structural form of a lot of pieces is, um, you know, sticks, you know, saplings, that sort of thing. And the, uh, I tend to leave, you know, the lumber part natural, so you can see the grain in it, you know. But I love the material, but I also try to be respectful to the, the form of the tree. But I refine it beyond what it could possibly do by itself. And then I can change it uh, into something totally other than what it was, although its essence is still there. But I've always been you know, very attracted to the wood just as it was. And I think that was a good way to get started and to get a really firm grounding about how pieces of wood get to go together and what is the relationship of the grain and how it looks and how it works. Uh, function is, uh, adds a level of complication to a piece that a sculpture doesn't have to contend with. So if you're gonna make a sculptural form that you can sit on, that's, that's a tall order. A, a chair is a very difficult object to make in construction.